everyone. Very warm welcome to St James today. My name is Charles and it's my privilege to welcome you, uh, whether you're gathered here in the building or joining our service online today, as we continue our Easter celebrations and uh, gather together for our service of Holy Communion. Our service begins today at the bottom of page two in our service sheets. And so we gather in God's name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's join together in the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we join in our first hymn for today, In Christ Alone, My Hope is Found. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. So let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil, 
and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Let's sit together as we pray. And so we say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand with me as we join in the praise of the angels. Glory to God in the highest. Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Do please take your seats and uh, Sue is going to come and share our first reading for today with us. Our first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4. The next day their rulers, elders and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caliphas, John and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified whom God raised from the dead. 
This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. second reading is from the first book of John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 16. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Gillian. We are going to join in our next hymn for this morning, The Lord is My Shepherd. Let's stand and sing together.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Our Gospel reading this morning comes from John chapter 10. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please do have a seat, folks. Pray that I would speak according to the will of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It is early in the morning in Jerusalem, and following a night in the cells of the religious police, Peter and John are hauled before the most powerful leaders of their day. Just a few short weeks ago, there was no such thing as Christianity. It was just Jesus of Nazareth and some ragtag bunch of faltering followers. Now, though, filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter the spokesman for retired fishermen and former tax collectors, says there is salvation in no one else but Jesus. He's making global, universal, eternal claims about who Jesus is. It's either so ridiculous it's funny, or so astonishing that it takes your breath away. I wonder how you receive those words this morning. There is salvation in no one else but Jesus. Sometimes we receive those words as a bit of an injunction, a bit of a telling off. Follow the rules if you want to be in, or else prepare to find yourself on the outside. But remember who Peter is. Remember who he's saying these words to. He's not some powerful person making a profound pronouncement. He's a fisherman. He is one of those stones that have been rejected by the builders, just like Jesus. And he is becoming a rock on which God is building the church. That is what God does. God builds a family where the forgotten find a place. And those on the edge are at the heart of all things. The trouble is that so often the church and vicars and people like me, they sound a lot more like a powerful leader than an upstart fisherman from Galilee. No wonder fewer people come to church if I sound like that. I'd like us to spend a moment this morning turning those words over together. There is salvation in no one else but Jesus. And we're going to do that by considering Jesus' words from John chapter 10. I am the good shepherd, he says. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. In John chapter 10, we discover who we are, and that we perhaps make a sound a bit like this. We're sheep. As you can tell, we're not rational, independent individuals. 
We're all alike in two ways. We're all equally lost and we're all equally loved. We're equally lost because there's no hope for us outside the sheepfold and away from the shepherd. But we're all equally loved in that the shepherd knows each and every one of us by name. Every one. So many names. So much love. As well as discovering who we are, we discover who Jesus is. Jesus is our shepherd. He has no identity other than to be the one who cares for the welfare of the sheep. Jesus seeks in all ways to give us abundant life and to bring us into the safety of his sheepfold. And when harm should come our way, what does he do? He lays down his life for us. This isn't some distant, arbitrary God orchestrating things by remote control. I lay down my life for the sheep. There is no length to which Jesus will not go to bring every single sheep into the eternal sheepfold. He doesn't pretend for a second that all the sheep are the same. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. No idealistic notion of all religions being the same. No agnosticism with goodwill being all right in the end. But Jesus says, I must bring them also. It's central to who he is, to all that he's about. Jesus' mission is not complete until those other sheep find their way into the fold. Salvation is not something that Jesus sort of tosses out there with a shrug of the shoulders saying, well, take it or leave it. It is a way of life that he gives his life to bring about. Jesus says, they will listen to my voice. Notice that he's shifting from his purpose on earth to the fulfillment of all things in heaven. When that veil is lifted away, when all ignorance and misunderstanding and accidents of history are removed, all sheep will hear Jesus' voice. Think back a few weeks ago, in the Easter garden, Mary meets Jesus and she hears her name. Everything falls into place. That is what Jesus is saying will happen to all sheep when they hear his heavenly voice. Today, as we gather together, hear the voice of the Good Shepherd saying your name showing you the future. There will be one flock and one shepherd. There is salvation in no one else but Jesus. We need to hear those words, not from people with power and authority, but from the stones that the builders reject, from those people that we reject. And in so doing, we push away so many of the rich and abundant gifts that God has to give his church. As we come to the Good Shepherd today, we discover that salvation is not about ensuring that we've got heaven in the bag. But that salvation begins in acknowledging that I am a wayward and stubborn and foolish sheep. But that I will find life at its fullest and best when I realise that the Good Shepherd knows my name. When I feel myself drawn towards the sheepfold. When I remember that the sheep, there are sheep not of this fault, and that I long for them to be gathered too. Today and every day, may each one of us hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and move further into what it means to be one flock together. For by God's grace, we all of us have one Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
I invite you to stand with me as we declare our faith in the words of the Creed on page 9 of our service sheets. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'd like to take your seats once more, then Christine is going to come and lead us in our prayers for this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have gathered here at St. James today in thanksgiving and praise to know that you are God and to place our lives anew into your perspective. Enlarge our vision with your word. Hold up before us your kingdom of justice and mercy, truth and compassion. Help us to understand the meaning of your gospel and give us grace to live by it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for a world in which even basic humanity so often fails. We pray for the leaders of all nations that they may serve their people, searching for policies and strategies for the good of all, especially the weakest and most vulnerable. We pray for the victims of war and violence among individuals and nations. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine, of Israel, Gaza, Palestine and Yemen. Please grant us insight and strength so that we always respond to hatred with love, to injustice with dedication to justice, to need with willingness to share, and to war with peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own community and especially all those living on the Sun Pits, School Road and Severn Road. We pray for the staff and students of St. James Church of England Academy and Ardent Forest School. We pray for our clergy, Charles and Emma, Rob, our warden Sue and Rachel, and all our volunteers who keep our churches running smoothly. We pray that our church may convey a message of openness, be a means of Christian service, and forge effective links with our local community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all those who are poorly at this time and have asked for our prayers. Give them courage, hope and peace, and the knowledge that you are present in their weakness, pain and suffering. We pray today for Paul Towers, Josie Bayless, June Quinney, Sheila Pike, Carol Cross, Kerry, Margaret Powney, Holly, Matt, Rosie, Gareth, Rachel G, Amanda and David. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of a loved one, and for those who have died and whose anniversary we, we recall. Please give them the comfort of the Holy Spirit and the fellowship of our church family. We pray today for the families and friends of Dennis Bishop, Sylvia Ward, Arnold Dawson, Joshua Smith, and Clive Woodfine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, make our doors wide enough to receive all who need human love and fellowship, and narrow enough to shut out all envy, pride, and prejudice. Let all who come here find joy, peace, and love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, 
our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Christine. Shall we stand together to share the peace with one another? The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So whether here in the building or online, let's offer one another a sign of that peace. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Shepherding God, we praise and thank you because you gathered your flock around Abraham and through Moses and Joshua you brought your sheep to a place of safety. In Jesus you came to us as a Passover lamb to take away the sins of the world. As our everlasting good shepherd, you promise that those who hear your voice shall never be in want, for you know your sheep by name and call us your own, and give to each of us a place in the sheepfold of your kingdom, where angels and archangels and all the company of heaven sing your unending praise. <coughs>
sustaining God as you lead your sheep to green pastures and guide them beside still waters. So you have led us to this table, where in bread and wine you restore our soul. Send down your Holy Spirit and restore your church through the abundance of this sacred meal. As we remember the story of your son's life laid down for us, sanctify this bread and cup and make them be for us the body and blood of your son Jesus Christ. Who at supper with his disciples took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, again he gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Saving God, your rod and staff comfort all who look to you in faith. Search out your sheep that are lost and bring them home. When you find them in the valley of fear, gather them in your arms. When they face evil in the presence of enemies, follow them with your goodness and mercy all the days of their lives. On that day when the shadow of death covers them, Bring them to dwell in your house forever. Shepherd us with your saints of every age into your glorious presence, where we shall behold your Lamb in seated glory, most holy Trinity, now and always. Amen. Let's sit together as we continue in prayer. And rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. As we gather around the Lord's table this morning, you are very welcome to come forward and to receive the bread and the wine as we share together. 
and our stewards will uh, direct us as we move around the building. If you would appreciate receiving communion where you are in your seat, then please just indicate to the stewards uh, and we can do that uh, with you. If for any reason it's more appropriate today for you to receive a prayer of blessing instead of sharing in the bread and the wine, uh, then just simply keep your hands by your sides and it will be my privilege to pray with you and for you today. If you're joining our service online this morning, then you might like to use the prayer of spiritual communion that you can find at the bottom of page 14 in our service sheets. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia!
Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection, and give us grace to follow in his steps, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here today, whether here in the building or online. And it's wonderful to see that Penny has uh, picked up on my hapless mistake uh, because the final uh, page of the order of service is still in my printer rather than having made its way to the photocopier. Um, so there's only one verse of the final hymn, so Penny is very kindly passing out some hymn books. And Penny, what number is it when the time comes? Okay, well, we'll get, we'll get to that point. 74. 74, well done. Give that person a prize. Why, while we're just passing out the hymn books, you will find uh, details of services and events uh, for the next little while at St. James and St. Botolph um, on the news sheet for today. And that's also available online if you would like that as well. Just a couple of things to highlight for you. Uh, later on today at four o'clock, uh, there's a service of Holy Communion happening at Coventry Cathedral uh, in thanksgiving of the 30th anniversary of women's ordination to the priesthood. Uh, everyone is welcome at that service of celebration. That's 4 p.m. today at uh, Coventry Cathedral. Just uh, coming up this week, uh, next Saturday is the St. Botolph's Coffee Morning. Uh, that takes place between uh, half past ten and half past twelve. You're very welcome at that. And uh, the other thing to highlight is that on uh, Sunday the 12th of May, we're going to have our annual parochial church meeting, APCM. And uh, we're going to be looking back over 2023, looking ahead to the year in front of us and giving thanks to God as we carry out our responsibilities uh, for caring for our parish. I think I shall commend the rest of the contents of the newsletter to your careful prayer and attention. And uh, we have the great privilege this morning of publishing some bands of marriage. So I publish the bands of marriage between Laurie Jane Jones of the parish of Holy Trinity Hinckley and Ryan George Green, also of the parish of Holy Trinity Hinckley. This is for the first time of asking, and if anyone knows any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. Shall we pray for Laurie and for Ryan? Father God, we thank you so much for Laurie and Ryan. We thank you for bringing them together. And we ask that as they prepare for their wedding and look forward to the start of their married life, that you would draw them close to one another and close to you, giving them and their families everything they need, that they might keep you at the heart of all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's also a, a day of celebration today uh, because... I think at least three or four people have told me that it's uh, Margaret's birthday today. Happy birthday, Margaret. Is it today or is it another day? Today. Right. Yes. But you can still remember her, which is good. Uh, am I allowed to, to tell people how old you are or would you like people to ask you? 80? What a wonderful blessing. Uh, thank you so much, Margaret, for... Uh, being such a wonderful part of our church and we have uh, some cakes to celebrate afterwards I believe so if you can stay after the service for refreshments then it'd be wonderful to spend 
a bit more time together. And Audrey, could we sing to Margaret? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Bless you, Margaret. Right, well, we've warmed up our voices nicely now uh, for hymn 74 in the Orange Books, uh, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Let's stand and sing together. 76. 74. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, fill you with his strength to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.